Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor appear in Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Unlike all other skill books in the game, these are crudely drawn. This tells us that this series of magazines were crafted long after the apocalypse. Now, I long thought that Junktown was just poetic. The magazine was using the word Junktown as a way to describe a clever entrepreneur who was able to find junk and barter it for jewelry. But the truth is that Junktown is actually a place. The magazine is not talking about a jerky vendor who can turn junk into jewels, but rather it's talking about a jerky vendor whose shop is in Junktown. Where is Junktown? To find out, we have to go back in time to the year 2161. In this year, the Vault Dweller travels south from Vault 13 and south of Shady Sands to discover a ramshackle town named Junktown. At the gate, the Vault Dweller is stopped by the town's guard, who tells him to put his weapon away. If the Vault Dweller refuses, all the guards in the town turn hostile, leaving us with only one option to be compliant. We say, sounds fair. By the way, what is the local law regarding weapons? The guard responds, it's good that you asked. No weapon can be drawn except in self-defense. If you start a fight, it's your fault. Other than that, it's your right to go around armed. Just don't pull a knife or a gun without just cause. Have a good day. After we remove our weapons from our inventory, we can talk with this guard to find out more about the town. The guard tells us that this town is called Junktown, and he says that it's a trading town, and they often do trade with another town called The Hub, although he refers to the residents of that town as being stuck up. If we respond by saying that we are from The Hub, for the rest of the game, he greets you with a sneer. He gives us one final warning not to make trouble, and we can go further in. As soon as we pass through the gate, we see another guard wielding a shotgun. This is Lars, the chief of police. Lars tells us that he and the other guards work with Killian Darkwater, the mayor of Junktown. He says that they have their hands full dealing with murderers, thieves, and other scumbags who come in from the desert. He then offers us a friendly piece of advice. He says, you'll do well to stay away from Gizmo. That fathead runs a crooked operation, but we just haven't been able to prove anything. He and his lackeys, the Skulls, are going to take the fall sometime soon if Killian has anything to say about it. We can ask him why he hasn't busted Gizmo and the Skulls, whoever they are, sooner. And he responds like a man of law should. He says, we've got to do it all proper like. We know that Gizmo runs a rigged operation and all, but we need hard evidence to bring him down. Same with the Skulls. They rough someone up, we bring one or two of them in, but nothing changes. We just don't have any direct evidence tying them to any of the killings or muggings. We then have the option to leave these guards to their own devices or to offer our help. Lars says, hell, if you think you can get some dirt on either of them, we'd appreciate the help. Killian's the one to talk to if you want to talk about Gizmo. But if you can get some info on the skulls, just come back to me and me and the boys will take care of them. We have barely passed through the gate and we already have something to do. We need to find evidence implicating the skulls and we need to talk with Killian Darkwater about Gizmo. The building right outside the gate is the guard headquarters. As we walk around talking to the guards, they all warn us to watch out for Gizmo and his goons. To the east, we find a small shack with a white door labeled Jail. This is guarded by a man named Andrew. He tells us that he's guarding the jail, even though there's no one inside of it, to make sure people don't get in or out. We ask him, why don't you want anyone to get in? And he responds by saying, someone might leave something to help a prisoner escape, or someone might get locked inside and stuck until we can get the keys, which makes perfect sense. He wishes us a good day and we go on our way. The building just north of the jail is a simple peasant home, nothing of interest in there. And to the west, we find a large white square building labeled hospital. This is the operation of Doc Morbid, who has a dark secret side business that he conducts from his basement. I covered the full story of Doc Morbid and his insidious business in the video I published a few days ago called The Horrifying Truth About Iguana Meat. You can click here to watch that story. Junktown is split 
into three zones. Doc Morbid's hospital is the last one in this zone, so heading north, we enter the next zone to find Darkwater's general store. As we enter, our companion named Ian tells us that the man who runs this general store is a good man, and that they have plenty of gear. Killian, as we remember from Lars, is also the mayor of this town. Let's have a chat with Killian to see if we can learn more about Gizmo. The name's Killian, Killian Darkwater. I'm the mayor of this fine town, and who might you be? Oh, my name is Oxhorn, and I'm from up north. Not much up that way except desert and shady sands. You from there? It's clear he doesn't believe us right away, so if we try to change our story, he can tell that we're not being completely upfront. Yeah, you sound like you're hoping I'll fill in some gaps for you. But if we try and tell him the truth and say that we came from Vault 13, he doesn't believe us. Oh yeah, sure you do. And when you were a baby, your crib was a safe. No, I'm serious. It's called a vault. It protected us from the Great War. It's been full of people for 80 years. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Ain't the worst story I've been told. So... What can I do for you? Well, so much for conversation with this guy. Maybe we can at least get some information out of him. What's outside of Junktown? Well, travelers tell me there's a bunch of crazies up north called the Vipers. Another group of yahoos out east called the Khans. Neither one of them likely to invite you to supper is anything but the main course, if you know what I mean. Any other cities around here? Well, you got the hub southwest. Don't go south, though. That'd be Necropolis. The, uh, climate's bad there, rain or shine, if you understand what I'm saying. What can you tell me about your town here? Well, Junk Town's not much, but it's home. Mostly we trade with people or let them forget their troubles for a bit. Of course, we have our share of problems. Problems? From outside, we've had the occasional to-do with the cons, but they've been pretty quiet lately. Inside, trouble's been from the skulls. And I hear some strange things happening down by the hub, but they haven't affected us yet. Knock on my mother-in-law's head. What kind of stuff you got to do around here? Oh, we got tons to do. The scum pit's on the east side by the entrance. Great drinking place. Gizmos is near there. And if you're hurting, Doc Morbid's your man. Now, if at any time we say something that even slightly offends him, he becomes surly for the rest of the game, even if we assist him in any of his requests. If we make it clear that we think his little town is boring by saying, that's all there is to do around here? Well, if we're too fast for you, just pass on by, pal. It is pal, ain't it? I see, so there really is nothing exciting in town. But you obviously have me confused with someone who has to take your lip. Why don't you come back when your mama teaches you some manners? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we could go back to Killian to talk more, and he's not terribly pleased to talk with us. You again. What do you want now? And we can barter with the guy. Show me your goods, Killian. Well, that's a damn fine coincidence. That's what this store is here for. We got about everything you can need. Let me show you some things over here. He has a fine array of items, including a 44 Magnum pistol. But we shouldn't buy this now. We may get it for a better price later. As soon as we end our barter dialogue with Killian, an assassin approaches from the door. He shouts, Gizmo sends his regards and opens fire on Killian. Now we could stand idly by and watch the firefight take place, or we can jump into the middle of things and help Killian defend himself. If we do, after the assassin is dead, Killian thanks us. Listen, thanks for saving my life. It's a mighty brave thing to do. Now, it looks like we've got ourselves a situation here. I know Gizmo's behind this, but I need proof. You interested in helping? Now, I am interested in helping Killian out, but before we agree to help, let's finish exploring the town. I'd like to know a little bit more about Gizmo before I get my hands dirty. We can loot the corpse of the assassin to find a hunting rifle on his body. A great way to find a weapon that does decent damage at long range. Just north of Darkwater is the Crash House Hotel. The front desk worker is kind enough we can ask her about the water we're looking for for Vault 13 or any other information, but she doesn't have a whole lot to say. Instead, she refers us to the Scum Pit, which apparently is the nearby bar. In the room directly north of us, we find a woman, alone. If we inspect her, the game says that we see a pouty 
shapely woman. She says, hey darling, how you doing? If we respond by saying that we could be better, she offers to help us with that. We then ask her how much she charges and then she laughs. She says, oh baby, if you gotta ask, more than you can afford. Maybe next time, sugar. Well, it's clear what kind of business this woman does. We are apparently too broke to afford her services. Continuing to explore the house, we find a refrigerator in the main lobby. This has a bunch of good stuff that we can take without turning anybody hostile. At the end of a hallway, we find a woman. We can introduce ourselves and say, Hello, I'm Oxhorn. I'm new to this town. She responds by saying, Apparently so, since everyone knows that this is the territory of the Skulls. You'd better beat it before someone decides to hurt you. We can ask her to explain who are the Skulls. That's us, she says. We're the meanest gang in town. Actually, we're the only gang, but nobody messes with us. So you pretty much run the town then, eh? And she says, you bet, nobody messes with us. Well, except for Killian, but he's cool and all. He's like the sheriff, man. We do whatever we want. We can then ask her to tell us who's in the gang. She says there's Victor, who's in the room just beyond, Shark, who likes to hang out at the scum pit, Vinny, who's also in the room just beyond, and a couple of other guys who stop by from time to time. She gives us directions to the scum pit, which is the sleazy bar just north of here. And when we ask her what she does, she says, well, we really just hang out. Sometimes we play games at gizmos or have some fun over at the scum pit. She also says that the skulls sometimes do odd jobs for gizmo and sometimes they work as mercenaries for travelers. She then gives us a warning saying that Victor likes to stalk people. We should probably keep our distance. And here we can get some more information on gizmo. When we ask her what she can tell us about him, she says he's the huge fat guy who runs the casino. He wants to run junk town, but Killian keeps him in Line. He pays pretty well, though. Occasionally, he'll hire Vinny or Victor to deal with people for him, if they've become a problem. Like one stranger who showed up here a few weeks ago. I wonder if we'll find out more about that stranger. But this girl seems nice enough. We can ask her, why do you hang out with these guys? And she says, we're like a family. We take care of each other. Well, except for Shark, who's always breaking things. Well, and Victor, who looks at people funny. But Vinny is cool, and we do stuff together, you know? We're like friends and stuff. Well, it's clear that this lady isn't the brightest bulb in the bunch. If we choose any of the speech options that make fun of her or ridicule her gang, she says, we'll see about that, and then calls for Victor. Immediately, we get engaged in combat, and all the skulls in the entire hotel converge upon us. But there's more to this story of the skulls than this one encounter, so we're not going to anger them just yet, and instead continue to explore. But by now, my character is getting pretty tired. It's been a long travel, from Shady Sands, so I went down to the innkeeper and bought a room for the night. The next morning, we see a man in the hooker's room, and the innkeeper asks us for help. Thank God you're here, she says. Some crazy guy has Cynthia held hostage. He's threatening to kill her. You've got to help. If we respond by saying, nah, don't bother me, the innkeeper says, you are an incredibly cold person. She could die without your help. Tough, that's life, we say. And as soon as we do, the innkeeper goes in and attacks. She kills the raider, but not before the raider kills Cynthia. If we try to talk to the innkeeper again, she says, you should have saved Cynthia. It's your fault she died. I hope you are happy with yourself. And from now on, she'll no longer talk to us. We can't use the services of this hotel. Instead, we can offer to help. As soon as we open the door, the raider says, that's it. Don't come any closer. I'll off her. I swear. We have a number of options to respond if we try to respond the brute force way by saying, if you don't let her go, I'll kill you. He says, oh, big man, let's see you try. But first, and he kills her. We then have to fight the raider, but we've already lost Cynthia. Instead, if we choose, don't do it, He'll say, and why not? She's just a whore. We can say, she has just as much right to live as you do. And he says, no, no way, not this one. But he doesn't attack. So we can talk to him again. Stay back, he says. I don't want to hurt her, but I will. We can say, don't, or I'll have to hurt you. Try it, he says, and she dies first. Now, what were you saying? 
It'll be hard to hurt her with that hole in your head, we can say. What hole, he responds, the one I'm gonna put there right now. This successfully enrages him to the point where he attacks us and only us, leaving Cynthia alive. All we have to do now is destroy this raider, and when done, we can talk with Cynthia. But she's not pleased. She says, you killed him. Why did you have to kill him? You bastard, I can't believe you killed him. All he wanted was someone to talk to. You don't care about human life, do you? Just get the hell out of my room. Oh, well, she's clearly distraught. But the innkeeper is all right. She comes over and says, thank you for helping Cynthia. She's usually not a problem. You deserve a good night's sleep on me. But don't ask for another freebie. And now we can use the inn for free. As soon as we enter the room, we can choose to sleep. In the morning, we can go back and talk to Cynthia, but she refuses to talk to us. She wouldn't offer us her services before because we were too poor. Now she won't because she says we have no humanity. Well, let's explore some other options. If instead of the other two options, we choose the non-violent route and we say, there's no need for violence, let's talk about this. The raider says, what world do you live in? Out here in the real world, blood flows, man blood flows, and it's gonna spill all over this room if you don't get out of here. Now we can botch this. If we say, okay, I'm backing off, you don't have to worry about me, he says, oh yeah, don't try anything or she gets it. We can then initiate dialogue again. Stay back, he says, I don't wanna hurt her, but I will. And we can ask him, why do you want to hurt her? She laughed at me, he says. They all laughed at me. I'll make them pay, I swear. Hmm. I can only think of one reason why a hooker would laugh at this guy, but it's not polite, so I'm not going to mention it. We can say, I trust you. Let's work through this, okay? And he says, you sound like an all right guy. No one ever wanted to help me before. I think we can talk some more. If we initiate dialogue again, he says, where do we go from here? We say, you tell me you're the one in charge. And then he makes his demands, as a typical raider would. He says, I want some money, and I want to get out of here peacefully. No one follows me. Now, the result here depends upon our speech skill. We can always end peacefully by giving him the money he needs, but we can try to find ways around that. However, if we choose, sorry, we can't do that, he says, you lied to me, and he kills Cynthia. So trying again, we can talk to him and say, we can talk this over. What can I do to help? He says, geez, that's funny. Who says I want help? You do, we say. By holding this woman hostage, you're asking for help. I can help. This psychoanalysis stuns him. He says, oh, I got to think about this. Give me a moment. When we talk with him again, we return to the dialogue option where he asks for money. We saw what would happen if our speech skill is too low, if we try and trick him by saying, okay, but you have to let the girl go first. Show me some trust and I'll trust you. He responds, I don't like this. What stops you from just shooting me in the back when I walk out of here? If we fail the check, he again kills her. I finally succeeded by choosing the option that says, you don't get any money, but you can just walk away. No one will do anything to hurt you, I promise. He says, well, that's okay, I guess. And he walks away. Now that the raider is gone, we can talk with Cynthia. Thank you for what you did, she says. No one ever took care of me like that before. Now, we have to be careful here. If we say, I can really take care of you later, she gets upset and says, is that all you think about? And the conversation ends. If we want to be successful with Cynthia, we have to be polite. And we say, you're welcome. She continues. My boss didn't even send some of his goons to help. You'd think, for all the cash I make for that loser, he would at least live up to his part of the bargain. Who's your boss, we can ask. None other than Gizmo, she responds. He runs all of the sin in this town. Killian sure as hell wouldn't put up with me or my kind. If it wasn't for the fact that I make Giz a whole lot of money, I'd have to do other things to him. And honey, those thoughts just don't do my stomach a whole lot of good. What else does Gizmo control? Just about every bad thing a person could do in this town, she says. He owns the casino. He runs me and some of the other girls. Even some of the little kids? I hear he is trying to take over the bar. Giz wants to take care of Killian, if you get my meaning. Now we have plenty of information to hate Gizmo. We can ask her how many guards does he have. She says that she knows those eight 
personally, if we get her meaning, but that she thinks he has ten or so. Does he have a stash of money? She says, money? How would I know? He only takes my money. He doesn't show me his. I would guess that it's in his bedroom, but for all I know, he could keep it where the sun doesn't shine. And for Giz, that's a big place. Does he have any weaknesses we can ask? She says, only that he thinks he doesn't have any. Well, that and he's a fat slob who can't even move. He's got to have his guards help him move around. Even then, they gotta use a little tricycle. After we've learned everything we can about Gizmo from Cynthia, we can talk with her a bit more about her professional services. At this point, knowing that most of this money is going to Gizmo would turn me off of them. But since we saved her at this point, her price is 40 bucks for 10 minutes. If we agree, she says, I'll show you a good time, and the screen goes dark. Well, now that we've saved Cynthia and learned a lot more about Gizmo, we can head north to the final zone in town. As soon as we arrive, we see a small group of people to the east with a dog blocking the door to a shack. As we approach, a man named Phil talks to us. He says, Mr. I would be really happy if you were to get rid of that damn dog. Why? We ask, and he says, it won't let us back into our house. That's why. Isn't it your dog, Phil? No, he says, it was a pet of a traveler. When the traveler died, this damn dog just plopped its furry butt down on my doorstep and wouldn't leave. It's been there for days. Who was this traveler, we can ask? And he says, I don't know, some guy. He came from the east, he said, like anyone could get past the Deadlands to the east. He ran afoul of Gizmo, trying to interfere with Gizmo's business. So Gizmo had a couple of his boys beat him up and throw him from the casino roof. The traveler broke his neck and died. The dog was pissed. Ah, so this is the man that the female Skulls member told us Gizmo killed earlier last week. And we can ask him, what did the Traveler look like? And Phil says, oh, the guy was tall, dark haired with a little graying around the edges. He was dressed all in black leather, like that's a good idea in the desert, and carried a shotgun. He also had a funny accent. The dog was his constant companion, followed him everywhere. So now we need to figure out a way to get rid of this dog. Phil tries to get back into his house and the dog goes, grrr. <laughs> and then Phil waves all of his limbs and runs away. Well, we can't talk with this dog. We can't interface with him in any way. But Phil mentioned that this dog's previous owner wore a black leather jacket. Well, we so happen to have one in our inventory. If we put it on immediately, the dog seems to think that we are his owner. We gain 100 experience for helping Phil solve his canine conundrum. We have discovered... Dog meat. And dog meat is now our companion. The peasants are impressed. A nearby peasant says, That sure is a nice pooch you have there. If we go in to talk to Phil, he doesn't have much to say, but he does say, I wouldn't trust that beast if I were you. That thing's a killer. Well... Better to have a killer in your party than a lover. But there's another way to convince Dogmeat to join our party. If we access our inventory and place some sort of food item in our active slot, in this example, Iguana on a Stick, we can then activate it and select Dogmeat. We get a message saying, it seems you've made a friend of this dog. And we gain experience for helping Phil. Either way, we walk away from this experience with a brand new companion. Now we have Ian and Dogmeat. Now the Skulls, Raiders, and the Innkeeper talked a lot about the Scum Pit. Heading north from this area where we found dog meat, we find the Scum Pit. But as we approach the door, we get a message that the bar is locked. Looks like the pub is only open in the evening, so we'll have to come by another time. But behind the pub, we see what looks like some sort of fighting ring. As we get close, we see a couple of guards, the proprietor, and what the game describes as a tough-looking, muscular man standing outside. Talking with him, we can ask him what he does, and we learn that his name is Saul. He works as a boxer for none other than Gizmo. Seems like everybody here works for Gizmo. But Gizmo pays good monies to fighters in this ring, which is why Saul became a boxer. We learn that Saul has been in this town since he was a small boy. He was always getting into scuffles with his brothers. One day, a band of raiders attacked the town, and he beat one into submission before the raider could even draw his gun. Saul says that it was just luck, but after that, Gizmo began sponsoring organized fights. Saul needed the money, and so he's been 
been boxing ever since. We can ask him what happened to his brothers. He says my brother James was killed in a raider attack a few years ago. Shortly after that, his brother Daryl gathered together some things and set off south towards a mythical place called the Glow in search of the treasure of the ancients or something like that. And he never came back. We can ask him why he stays here in Junktown. He says, I like it here. I live here. I like boxing. I have a good life with Trish and I have no desire to go elsewhere. He can then give us more information about the town, Killian, the general store owner, and the skulls, but we already know enough about them. But we do learn from him that the skulls' weapon of choice are knives, which may come in handy since we wield guns. Next to Saul is Gustafer. He's the proprietor of this boxing ring, and we learn that boxing fights only happen once every three days. We can talk with Gustafer to bet on a fight. If we choose the options that say, I've got better things to do with my money, goodbye, or no thanks, then that just ends the conversation. Our only option to talk further with him is to ask him what the odds are for the fight. He says, who do you want to bet on, Saul or the challenger? Odds favor Saul winning, cost is 25 caps to bet. You get 50 if you win betting on Saul, and 100 if you win betting on the challenger. Well, Gustav says that Saul is the favorite, so let's bet on Saul. The fight starts at 2 p.m. We can wait here until the fight starts. And when it's time, Gustav says, let the fight begin. We then see Saul and the anonymous challenger fighting in the boxing ring. But it looks like Saul was lying about his fighting prowess. And it looks like Gustav was lying about the odds because the challenger knocks Saul out. Gustav says, well, you can't win them all, my friend. Better luck next time. But something tells me that this fight was rigged. I was so suspicious that I waited three days and then bid on the challenger, and after a lengthy fight, Saul won this time. I'm pretty sure that if Gizmo's running this operation, the fight is rigged. Well, by the time the fight was over, it was evening, and so I walked on over to the scum pit. If you arrive in the evening before dark falls, we find a number of patrons inside the pub. At the western side of the pub, we find a man standing off by himself. As we get close, he addresses us and says, Another new face. Travelers here are a dime a dozen, but you have the look of someone different. Care to join me for a drink? Sure, we respond, and he says, delightful. I hope you don't mind your drink well watered. They treat beer here like it's a potted plant. So what's your story, we ask him, and he says, I could ask the same of you. In the interest of amity, I suppose I'll tell first. I am called Tycho. I come from out east, what used to be called Nevada. That's a pretty long trip, we say, and he says, yes, it was. Decided to take it easy for a while. This place shows some promise just as soon as someone cleans up some of the scum. What do you know about these jerks, we can ask, and he says, there are two grades of scum here. He then talks about the Skulls Gang and Gizmo. As we try to leave, he says, woo, not so fast. We never finished introductions, remember? What's your name, stranger? We can say, I'm Oxhorn, and he says, good to meet you. Step carefully, friend. If we initiate dialogue again with him after having talked with Killian, we can enlist his help. We say, Killian asked me to clean up this town and I'd like your help. Tycho is more than happy. He says, well, it's about time. He says, lead on, my friend, and let's do some street sweeping. I'd recommend knocking over Gizmo, if I may. And with that, Tycho joins our party. We now have a party of four. The Vault Dweller, Ian, Tycho, and Dogmeat. In the northwestern corner of the pub, we find a singer. If we insult his singing, we can't talk further with him, but if we compliment him on his singing, he'll add a number of markers on our map. We get a location for the Brotherhood of Steel, the Hub, and Aditum. We can also tip him for karma. By this time, night had fallen on Junktown, and so I went back to the scum pit to see what nightlife was like here in the town. We head on over to the bartender. His name is Neil. We can ask him for information. He tells us everything about the town that we've heard from others already, and then he sells us beverages. He only has three things for sale. Nuka-Cola for three caps, beer for five, and the hard stuff for 20. As soon as we purchase our drink, a nearby skull thug punches a waitress. The waitress runs off and says, Saul, where are you? But Neil the bartender pulls out a gun and shoots this guy. Get out of here, ya punks. If any of you ever touch her again, 
I'll kill the whole lot of you. One of the other Skull gang members witnessed the entire scene. She left the pub. I followed her out to try and talk with her, but she didn't have much to say. She just said, You're on Skull's turf now, stranger. You better leave. Heading back to the pub, we can talk with the waitress to see if she's okay. We can ask her who owns the bar, and she says, His name is Neil, and he's a good guy. Always treated me right. We used to date, but he got a little too serious for my liking. I don't want to be a widow. Well, based on the behavior of Neil that we've already seen, it's likely someone will put him in the ground sooner than later. We can then ask her why did she scream Saul's name when she was being attacked, and she says, Saul is my boyfriend. He's really good to me. But we get the impression that there's a little bit of pain behind those words. Looting the corpse of this skull member, we find some leather armor and a knife, just as we were told we would. We can then talk with Neil to learn more about what just happened here. We say, who were those jerks and he says oh them they're the skulls they're a local gang all the riffraff sometimes they start fights or cause a little trouble usually killian keeps them in line though now sitting at the corner of the bar is some sort of cup or trophy looking thing we can ask him about that we can say neil what is that trophy sitting on the bar he says that's not a trophy it's an urn it contains my wife's ashes. Besides this bar, it's the most important thing in my life. Well, now that we've made sure that Trish the barmaid and Neil the bartender are okay, we can head south to talk with the Skulls. Remember, Lars the guard out front wanted us to find evidence of their misdeeds. If we can find this evidence, we can turn them into Lars. Heading inside the hotel, we can go to the back room where we saw the Skulls earlier. The man in a leather jacket and blue jeans standing in the back is the boss of the Skulls named Vinny. We can ask him for more information about his gang. He says we are the one and only Junktown gang. We have the run of the streets, and we rule the city at night. But we've heard that Gizmo runs the city. But Vinny corrects us. He says, that slob can't even stand up by himself. We are the muscle in this town. We take what we want. But what about the mayor Killian? We ask, do you have some sort of deal with Killian? He says, we don't bother Killian, and he doesn't bother us, as long as we keep it low key. You get me? We then have an option to offer to join his gang, which may be a good idea. Maybe we'll get the evidence we need if we offer to join. But Vinny's not going to have it. He says, how do we know you're tough enough to be a skull? We say, let me prove myself to you. Vinny thinks for a second and he says, if you want to prove that you belong in the skulls, I want you to steal that old bastard's wife's ashes. Let's make Neil suffer for his last couple of hours. If we say no that we're not interested, he scoffs. And if we agree, he says, if you're hard enough to do that, then maybe you'll make a skull after all. Bring it here once you've got it. Heading out the door, we can go back to Neil's bar. We can use our steel skill to take the urn sitting on the bar, but if Neil catches us, he attacks us. Hey, you stole my urn, he says, and he opens fire. So, we may need to try this a few times, reloading previous saves until we're successful. If we are successful, no one is the wiser, and we can take it back to Vinny at the hotel. When we tell him that we have the urn, Vinny is elated. He wants Neil to suffer, but then he confesses his plans to go and kill him later tonight. If this horrifies us, and we say that we don't want to deal with anyone like him, he attacks us. But other than that, we have two options. The first is to say, let's crush him. If we choose that option, we are immediately teleported to the inside of the scum pit. Neil shouts, You damn kids! I'll show you a thing or two! Vinny says, We said we'd be back, you old man! And then Vinny opens fire on Neil. Each of the Skull's thugs moves in on both Neil and Trish. Saul is nowhere to be seen, and the Skulls kill both Trish and and Neil. On Neil's corpse, we find 43 caps, a stack of 14 millimeter armor piercing rounds, a 14 millimeter pistol, and some stim packs. But on Trisha's corpse, we find nothing. She is, after all, a simple, poor peasant barmaid. The skulls then congregate inside the pub. They flex their muscles and celebrate. Hey, bro, we rule this town, they shout. But after killing Neil and Trish, all of the guards in Junktown are hostile. It'll be hard for us to leave this town with our lives. Instead of joining the Skulls and killing Neil, we have two other options. When he asks us if we are ready to go kill Neil, instead of saying, let's crush him, we can say, I've got some other stuff to do before then. I'll meet you there. Then we'd leave and
and go south. For after all, Police Chief Lars just wanted evidence of their misdeeds. We now have all the evidence we need. We know that they're heading over to Neil's. We go to Lars and tell him that the Skulls are planning to kill Neil. Lars says, what? Hmm, we'll see about that. I'll send some of my men over to ambush them when they try it. Are you going to be there? We have two options here. If we say, no thanks, I've done my good deed for the day, then the screen goes dark, and we get a message saying, Lars and his men quickly eliminate the skulls. Talking to Lars again, he simply says, thanks for your assistance. Junktown's a little safer now because of your help. If we go back to the crash house, we see that all of the skulls are gone, except for the one female skull whom we talked with outside the room earlier. If instead we say, you bet I'll be there, we instantly teleport to the pub, but this time, all of the town's guards are there as well. Vinny and his thugs open fire on Neil, but we and the town guards are there to defend them. The skulls shout out taunts, we gonna add your skull to our collection, they say, but the guards say, we don't like your kind around here. But after everything, the skulls die. They were no match for all of us. The guards leave, allowing us to loot the bodies. We find knives, leather armor, leather jackets, and 10mm pistols. Nothing terribly amazing. Heading back to Lars at the entrance of the town, he thanks us for our help, and we gain 500 experience points. With this option, we gain the most experience points, and we get the loot from the skulls. But there is another option. After we witness a Skull Gang member assault Trish in the bar, and after Neil kills him, we can go back to the hotel and talk to that one female gang member standing out in the hallway. At that point, a new dialogue option opens up, where we can ask her what she's been up to lately. She says, not too much, actually, there's not much to do. I mean, Shark has been causing some fights at the scum pit, as usual, she says, that's the guy that Neil killed. But what else is there to do around here? We can then say, you could always try doing something else. You must have some talents or hobbies. She says, well, I do sort of like to draw, and Vinny says I'm a pretty good cook. But I mean, hey, we have fun and stuff, you know? But we can be the voice of reason in her life and say, but what will you do when you get old? Old. Where will your life go? How will you make money? And she says, I never gave it much thought. I mean, Vinny and Victor make some money, and Shark occasionally does some bodyguarding for visitors here. I don't know. We can then say, you should probably get out while you still can. And she agrees. I guess, she says. I never thought about it much. After a day or two, we can come back to the crash house, and we see that Sherry, for that is her name, has moved down into one of the lower rooms. We can talk with her and ask her how it's going, and she says, Oh, I'm doing much better. I do some cooking now at the scum pit and at the crash house. It gets tiresome some nights, but I do like to cook, and I get to meet all sorts of interesting people, and I get paid too. She then asks us how we've been doing. We can say we're doing all right, which ends the conversation. Or we can say I've been better, and she says, I'm sorry to hear that. Perhaps you should get a room and sleep it off. Talk with the innkeeper. Oh, and here, I can fix you something to eat if you like. If we agree, she says, there you go, enjoy, and I'll see you around. And we get some food added to our inventory. But with the final option, we can say, I need your help. I need your testimony to put away the skulls for good. But she says, you want me to turn in my friends? We say they've been hurting people, and they will go on hurting people unless they're stopped. You changed your life for the better. Now you have a chance to help improve the lives of others, too. She says, well, I mean, they are my friends, but I guess that they shouldn't be allowed to hurt people the way they do. And I guess I trust you since you helped me. All right. With her testimony at the ready, we can head back down to Lars. We can say, I have testimony about the illegal activities that the Skulls were involved in. Lars says, so you have some info on the Skulls? What can you tell me? We can say they're involved in some muggings and killings going on here. That's great, says Lars, but I can't just jail them all on one person's say-so. I need some hard evidence or inside testimony. And we can say that we've got the testimony of Sherry, a former gang member. Excellent, says Lars. I'll I'll pick her up for a few questions, and I'm sure that I'll get all the information that I need to put them away. If we choose this option, we get 500 experience for eliminating the Skulls Gang. Heading back to the crash house, we don't have any further dialogue options with Sherry, and we see that all the Skulls are gone from their back room. Heading on over to the jail, we don't have access to it, the front door is locked, but if we pick it, we see two Skulls members inside. However, we don't see Victor or Vinny. I'm assuming that Lars must have killed them. 
Well, now that we've met Trish, Saul's girlfriend, we can head back up to the boxing rink where we see that Saul is still knocked out from the fight before. We can tell him that we've met Trish, and Saul says that she is very important to him. But she doesn't like his boxing. She doesn't seem to understand that it's what he wants to do. We can respond with some intuition into their relationship and say that she's concerned for his welfare. She probably can't stand to see him getting beaten up and risking his life for Gizmo. We can tell him that if he doesn't find a compromise with Trish, he could lose her. I never thought of it that way, he says. I figured that she just didn't like me boxing. I suppose I'll have to talk with her more about this. Thanks. With that, we gain 250 experience for helping Saul and Trisha's relationship. We can then go back to Neil because we still have something that belongs to him. We can ask him, What happened to that trophy you used to have up there? He says, Some slime stole it. It wasn't a trophy, it was an urn. It contained my wife's ashes. And then we can tell him that we found his urn and we give it back to him. He says, Thank you. You can't know what this means to me. You'll never pay for a drink in this bar again. Doing this, we actually gain more karma than we lost by stealing the urn to begin with. And we no longer have to pay for drinks at the pub. Here you see I have 3,040 caps. We barter with Neil and we choose some hard liquor for 20 caps. But going back to our inventory, we still have 3,040 caps. This leaves one final loose end to tie up here in Junktown. It's time to confront Gizmo. The casino is the first building we see upon entering the third zone. It has a big neon sign outside spinning round and round that says, Gizmos. Our companion Ian warns us as we enter. He says, this is Gizmo's casino, a hive of gambling and underworld activity. Be careful. They say the games are rigged. I tried playing a few of the games and I lost every time. I don't know if it's just because I had a poor gambling skill, or if it's because the games really are rigged. Heading inside Gizmo's office, he confronts us. Get your butt in here and sit down. We got some business to discuss. What kind of business, Gizmo? Alright, here's the deal. Junk town. It ain't what it used to be. The only reason it's still here is because of my gambling establishment. Even so, Killian's been breathing down my neck, and I'm starting to take it personal. <laughs> and that's where you come in, Slick. What exactly do you want me to do? What I think is you're going to take them out for me, you know? No witnesses, just in, over, out. Why don't you send one of your goons to do it? I would, but there must be no connection between me and Killian's... <laughs> Unfortunate device. <laughs> How much are you willing to pay? A thousand caps, no more, no less. You call that a reward? If I'm gonna whack this guy, I'm gonna need more than that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. I think you're worth more. Fifteen hundred. Now we're talking. <laughs> I knew you'd see it my way. As proof, I want the dog tags Killian wears around his neck. You get them, you get your money. Now, just get. And don't cross me. I still got the kneecaps from the last one who tried. So Gizmo wants us to assassinate Killian, much like the last assassin he sent. It's also funny that he says that he doesn't want this to get back to him, because the first thing the assassin said whom we killed earlier was, this is for crossing Gizmo. The guy isn't playing as subtle as he thinks he is. Back down to the Darkwater General store, we can confront Killian and tell him that Gizmo has sent us to kill him. If we do, he and his guards turn hostile. If we are successful, on his corpse, we find 44 Magnum ammunition, 10 millimeter ammunition, a Desert Eagle 44 Magnum, and his dog tags. But now we've angered every guard in the town. We have to kill every guard and fight our way back to the casino. Now there are a few ways to assassinate Killian without angering all the guards. We could plant explosives behind him while sneaking, or we could inject him with some super stim packs, causing him to overdose. If we 
we choose those options, we do not anger the guards. But however we kill Killian, once done, we can head back to Gizmo for our reward. What do you want? I'm a busy man. I took care of Killian for you. Word is you might appreciate that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one's got you, buddy. <laughs> this is good, you know. Hey, hey, uh, you should leave town for a while, you know, uh, just in case. And if I don't leave town? You don't leave town, you end up under it. Got me. We go to Izzo, his bodyguard, to collect our fee, and then we have to hightail it out of town. But another option is to inform Killian that Gizmo is trying to kill him. Can I help you? We have an option to say, what do you know about this Gizmo character? Gizmo owns the casino, named it after himself. Be very careful around him. I'll say, that fat slob just tried to hire me to kill you. Why don't you do something about him? Now, if I get proof, the people of Junktown will kick him out. The way I figure it, you need to either plant a bug at his place or wear a wire and get him to confess to you. Can you handle that? If we tell him we're not interested in getting involved in other people's problems... Well, damn. That's too bad. But you know I'm going to have to lock you up until this thing is done. I can't risk Gizmo finding out. Sorry. If we resist, he and his guards attack us. Our only option, then, is to agree to be temporarily put in jail. If we pick the lock and try to escape, Andrew and the rest of the guards turn hostile. At this point, our only option is to wait until midnight, whereupon Andrew will let us out. Heading back over to the casino, we find Gizmo lying dead. Our other option is to agree to help him. If we ask him what we get in return, he says... I'll tell you what, anything in the store, even the most expensive, it's yours. No charge. If it's a gun, I'll give you all the ammo you can carry. Does that sound fair? Sounds good to me. I'll do it. All right. I owe you. Here's the bug in the wiretap. You let me know when it's done. Good luck. Killian then gives us the bug and the tape recorder. There are two ways to get the information we need to provide Killian with the evidence that Gizmo was trying to kill him. The first is to use our steel skill to plant the bug on Gizmo's body, but it's easy to get caught. And if we are caught... Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Izzo, tear his arms off! Gizmo sicks his bodyguard on us. But if we are successful, Gizmo is none the wiser, and we can head back to Darkwater to tell him the good news. Great. Let me make sure it's working. Loud and clear. We're gonna get him. We then choose our reward, and the quest ends. But there's another way to go about this, and that's to use the tape recorder, which we don't have to plant on his body. All we have to do is overhear his plot to kill Killian with the tape recorder on our person. Now, this only works if we first get the tape recorder from Killian after the assassin tried to kill Killian and then go to Gizmo. If we go to Gizmo first, we don't have the tape recorder on our body, so we can't record his plot to kill Kill Killian. But if we have the tape recorder and then we go to Gizmo, we can record his conversation. What do you want? I'm a busy man. Now, if at any point we're rude to Gizmo, he responds with brutality. You know, I don't like it when people insult me in my old place. Izzo, escort our guest out through the window. And we are forced to defend ourselves. So instead of insulting him, we can say, I'm here to tell you that your assassin failed. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you do, Gizmo. You hired someone to kill Killian, and he screwed up. I don't know who you are, but I don't take kindly to strangers walking into my office and accusing me of things they know nothing about. Hey, okay, if you don't want him dead, fine. I'm just trying to be helpful. Really? <laughs> He's gonna help me. What kind of help are we talking about? Well, let's take a hypothetical situation. Such as? Let's say you did try and kill Killian, and your assassin failed. That means you need a new one to do the job right. And let me guess, you're that someone. Very good. For a price, of course. Well, how can I trust you? 
because I'm here. And you need someone from out of town to do your dirty work, right? <laughs> All right. We can do this. But you work for me. You better know that nobody ever double-crosses Gizmo and lives to talk about it. You got me? Of course. But first I need to know why you want him dead to begin with. That's easy. I want him dead because he cramps my business. So, what are you doing for me? That's why I'm here. He'll be dead before sundown. Good. Return with the dog tags he wears around his neck as proof. Now, if at any time we give too much away and he catches on that he's being recorded, he responds... You're either real stupid or a real stupid spy. Doesn't matter, because now Izzo's going to make you real dead. And we have to defend ourselves. But with this conversation recorded, we can take it back to Killian. So, did you get the evidence? I sure did. Which? Bug or tape? The confession on tape. Let's hear it. We then give it to him so he can take a listen. That's the first time I've been happy to hear his voice. Thanks, friend. Now, time for you and me to take care of the other business. And like last time, we can choose our reward. A shotgun and shells, a suit of leather armor, a doctor's medical kit, all the stim packs he can spare, or we can get some karma by saying, no thanks, knowing that Gizmo's gonna get his due is thanks enough. Well, thanks again. Well, listen, I'm gonna take the guards and run Gizmo and his cronies out of town. I could use another gun. You up for it? All right, well, it depends on how much you're willing to pay me. Well, I can pay you the standard rate for mercenary work. 500 caps. Sorry, man, that's not enough. Listen, that's all I'm offering. Thanks for getting the evidence, but I'm not gonna beg for your services. All right, I'll do it for that fee. Go to Lars at the guard station. He'll fill you in. Now, listen... This town owes you a lot. Heading down to Lars at the entrance, we can tell him that we're ready. We and the guards get teleported to Gizmo's office. Killian shouts, I'm here to take you in, Gizmo. This time, I've got the proof I need. Gizmo responds, So it comes down to this, Killian. Well, I never could put up with your stink, and now I'm gonna put an end to it. The battle commences between Killian, the Vault Dweller, his companions, and all of the town guards, and Gizmo and his bodyguard, Izzo. When both are dead, the game teleports us back to the entrance, and Lars says, Thanks for all your help. Here's 500 caps. You'll always be welcome in Junktown, friend. We can then run back up to Gizmo's office inside the casino and loot the corpses. On Izzo's body, we find 50 caps. And on Gizmo's body, we find a stack of 28 rounds of 9mm ammunition, 100 caps, some iguana on a stick, and a 9mm pistol. Now, the prostitute working out of the crash house hinted at a stash of money inside Gizmo's room. Heading inside, we can check his bookshelf where we find a satchel filled with money, a copy of Guns and Bullets, and a lighter. Inside the satchel, we find 100 caps. And that is the full history of Junktown. A town of crime and corruption, but also one of law and order and hope, depending upon how the Vault Dweller chooses to resolve things. A town that inspired an entire series of magazines that even found their way all the way to the east coast of America. What are your thoughts on Junktown in Fallout 1? How did you resolve the many different plots going on here? And how do you like seeing videos about Fallout 1 lore? Share your thoughts with me in the comment section below. I read all of your comments and I use them as inspiration for my future videos. I publish new Fallout videos six days a week. I take Sundays off, which means I won't have a video on Monday, but if you want to find out what I'm going to publish Tuesday morning, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. 
If you'd like to get an Oxhorn or a Fallout-themed t-shirt, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.